My name is Basim Uthman. I'm professor of neurology, clinical neurology, and clinical neuroscience. I also serve as the vice chair of uh, neurology here in Qatar for the Wild Cornell Medicine. This is uh, very much overdiagnosed, and you'd hear a lot of people say, "No, oh, I have sinus. I have sinus." So you know, sinus disease is more specific. You need to go to an ear, nose, uh, throat doctor to really give you a good diagnosis. Normally, there's a nasal discharge with congestion and conjunctival injection, cough, sinus tenderness, and also uh, it may affect other sinuses that are not immediately uh, palatable. So it is normally chronic and uh, is misdiagnosed as migraine headaches and you need to seek medical attention for these. The other thing is the temporomandibular joint disease right here, okay? That can cause headaches sometimes and it's very important to go to the dentist to get that examined and get the alignment correct so that you can prevent those headaches. Lastly, there is what's called the post-concussion syndrome. And in patients who have had a closed head injury or they had concussion and sports concussion, they may complain of some memory difficulties, sleep disturbances, mood swings, depression, neck and back pain, dizziness, diffuse sensory symptoms, so on and so forth. Remember that these symptoms may last for about one to three years or so. Just understanding that this can happen in post-concussion and it is normally time limited. This can be treated normally with over-the-counter medications and again with the help of your doctor. If this is the skull right here and this is the brain and this is the brain stem and the spinal cord this blue right here is your cerebrospinal fluid. It's a very thin layer and the whole volume of all that fluid is no more than a cup or so. And you can imagine if it is decrease in volume you can have headaches. If it's increase in volume you can have headaches too. But this is um, a very um, uh, easy way of looking at what is happening in the brain when the doctor can send this fluid for analysis and can learn a lot about what's going on with the brain. And they can look at cells in there that may give them some diagnostic value, whether it's an infection, or sometimes they want to check the pressure because the headache may be because of increased intracranial pressure or actually a decreased pressure. They stick a needle in the back under local anesthesia and withdraw just a couple of tubes of the fluid that bathes the brain and the spinal cord and normally this is replenished within an hour or so and it is a very benign and uh, safe procedure. Do not be worried about any other complications. It is done hundreds of times in the hospitals or in the outpatient clinic. Live your childhood dreams. Be the change that you want. And always remember to keep your health first.